Mark and I are both interested in this archaeology of musical forms and the archaeology of musical instruments. Composer's Desktop Project, which is often abbreviated as CDP, is a collection of processes for dealing with sound, developed by a bunch of composers in the north of England around the mid-1980s. HSM. HMSL. HMSL, Hierarchical Music Specification Language, was designed by Larry Polanski, David Rosenboom and Phil Burke at Mills College in California. This is really great. You've got CDP stuff over here and HMSL stuff over here. It came out of an environment, which for me really goes back to the, to the mid 60s at least uh, and through the 70s, when we were very interested in exploring all the, the knowledge and inspirations that we were getting from the interdisciplinary environment of music and um, and artificial intelligence and anthropology and linguistics and, and uh, all of those sorts of things, uh, bringing that to bear on how compositional processes work and how we can make them live, how we can make them actually be part of an, ex an extended or intelligent or enriched instrument. With uh, HMSL, the, the composers were also inventing the, la the tools in which they could make their music, they were inventing um, the instruments and the compositional strategies um, and they were doing it in a software environment that controlled real world instruments. HMSL was much more like live real time improv, like let's just mess about and make some mental sounds. In CDP it was impossible to do live because you'd, you'd start it going and you'd have to wait two weeks for it to finish the process. So you'd, like people would set it going then go on holiday and come back. So you can kind of tell instantly the, to the two different traditions. The people involved in both these systems were kind of involved in the musical world and the computer science world and the computer engineering kind of world. They were really on this border between art and science. My composing is pretty eclectic across, the, you know, I write songs. But I also build models. And to the extent that a model is interesting to me, it will lead me into territory I wouldn't have discovered if I was just following my habits. Digital audio has become a standard. For me, HMSL is interesting because it completely goes against the grain of mass-produced topologies and creates a new world that invites complexity and invites the composer to really reconsider what music is. What's interesting is throughout the history of computer music, it's been this very radical kind of activity, asking questions about how it can, how computers can engage musical processes, the answer it gives is the kind of most conservative possible one you could imagine. Um, so I think for me it's interesting to look back at that time and look at the alternatives that were around and that's what we've done with this, this exhibition and picked up on two different kind of approaches. I would like people to come away with an awareness that there is a history to computer music that isn't just about making house tracks or club tracks. <laughs> Um, visual art being combined with music. Yeah, it makes me want to collaborate exactly. with other kinds of artists of different mediums, definitely. No, yeah, it works on like two different senses, like both visually, like because he had the videos as well, and then he had like the, the sound. But like I found like some of it, like the noise was quite frustrating. <laughs> and what we did was develop a system to completely disrupt all the patterns so that you couldn't dance to it at all. So yeah. <laughs> I realised he's just trying to work against like all generalisations and like all like social norms. We thought that HMSL had its its target application in in music, especially experimental music, but it could also be used uh, for educational purposes. I'm leading these kids through an exploratory experience with HMSL, seeing how can they interact with the interface, uh, how do they find it um, uh, engaging when they play on a keyboard and 
a program that I wrote at HMSL parses out what they play and brings it back and plays it back to them in different ways and lets them twist it upside down and change it and bend it and do it and do they find it intriguing. Knowing a little bit of coding is I think a very uh, uh, valuable skill to have. You don't have to be a computer expert but it's just to be able to understand cognitively how a sequential process machine or even a parallel process machine actually works. What an algorithm is. That's a good thing to know. I think that electronic, electronic music, which tends to be made on computers, has become very popular. I don't think an interest in coding computer programming languages um, and stepping outside the, the commercial systems, I don't think that is very popular. I don't think there are many people doing it. So I think it still is quite a marginalised activity. So for me, this, this exhibition is a way of kind of just picking up on alternatives to that kind of orthodox approach.